Let's add a workflow to an existing build chip project that allows us to quickly write and read data to an existing Firestore project. And we're going to be doing this with build chip, which will allow us to very quickly, using the best of the low and the no code worlds, set up a backend tool that allows us to have this functionality with only a few clicks. So here's our build chip project. We've got a number of workflows. We're going to be adding a new one from our templates called Firestore Write and Read. But before we do any of that, you might be wondering, wait, what Firestore database am I connecting to? Where do I hook it into my data? And there's two answers to this. First, if you want to quickly set up and test this backend, we actually provide you with a Firestore existing database that you can already get started with. However, if you would like to integrate your own and connect to your Firestore IAM, no problem. We've actually got some instructions for you to do that in our documentation. So here we are in BuildShip's documentation. You can see we've got a tutorial for connecting your Firebase project. So if I click here, you'll see a set of steps that you can take, integrate Firestore into your existing BuildShip account. And all you got to do is follow these steps and you'll be already up and running with your own Firebase data. For the sakes of this tutorial, we're going to quickly use the existing built-in one. Cool. So we're back in build chip. We're going to go ahead and select the Firestore write and read templates. I'm going to click on that and you're going to see it's going to quickly create a bunch of nodes. So we're just going to step through each of these to set up our backend. So our trigger we can see is a REST API call, which is a post request with a path create doc. So let's say we want to create users with this backend. So I'm just going to replace this with the RESTful path users, which takes a method post and that's that. The next node is an object validator. And what this is going to do is make sure that the structure of the data we send in is valid according to our specifications. So we can see this is coming from our request body and that's already all done. Next, let's look at the validations. If I click here, we're going to see we've got a bunch of stuff. So we've got our name, which is of type string and required, the address, which is a required string, the age, which is a required number, the active flag, which is a Boolean and required, and the bio, which is not a required field and is of type string. So we can use this to set up and validate the structure of our data. For example, let's go ahead and remove the address. Say we don't want to store that. All done. That is now saved and will be validated accordingly when we create a new user. Let's dive into that code real quick because I want to show you all what happens on the return. So if I click here on the code node and we scroll all the way down here, we're going to be returning an object made up of two parts. One is the data and the other is whether this is successful. So here, for example, we see the data is successful, but if we don't validate it successfully, we'll return success false with some errors. Fantastic. Next, we're going to be using the branch node to determine based on that success, which remember comes from the success field of the object validator node to branch. So if it is successful, it'll go this way. If it's not successful, then it'll go the else way. And let's examine that else real quick first. So if it's not successful, all we'll do is have a return node with a 400 and show those errors, which come from the object validators error field. So you can see that we use return values from previous nodes, and this can go far back to inform our users of what's going on. But let's go into the more positive side, shall we? If that validation is successful, then we'll go into this next node, which is the create Firestore document. The data we're retrieving from our object validator. The collection name we're calling fake users. Let's give this a more realistic name. Let's call it users. And there we go. Once we do that, we're then going to query our Firestore collection to get the latest five users, which will then go into our response. More on that in a moment. So we'll grab from our users collection the latest five entries. You can see our filters are empty and we're ordering them by created at descending. That is starting from the latest. Finally, we've got our return node, which will have a 200 because everything went okay. And the value, you might think, oh, this is the same data as the object validation. But if you look carefully, we can see this is coming from our Firestore collection query data. So this is the data that was queried, the latest five users. So with that all done, let's go ahead and ship our new workflow. 
Great, now that this is deployed, we're going to go ahead and hop into Postman to test this out. Alright, here we go. So we're in Postman now, and you can see I've already gone ahead and created a user called Marta, but let's go ahead and create another one. So we can see here, here's my address set to users, method is post, and let's create a new one using JSON. Let's call it Geraldine, age 26, and active is going to be set to false. I'm going to go ahead and click on send here, and now this is going to be sent to build ship, which is going to return, wow, super quick, with the latest five users, of which are only two. So there's Marta, who was created before Geraldine, and here's Geraldine, which was just created. So the response is coming in as the latest five users, of which we only have two. Cool, and you can see that was super easy to do, but let's hop over back to build ship real quick. Amazing. If we want to expand on this, say we want to have other fields, all we got to do is edit our validations to add new ones. Maybe we want to restore that address, for example. You can see, for example, that I didn't add a bio in either of these users, but it still got not validated as false because the bio is not required. Let's say even we wanted to send this query as an email to one of our administrators. Well, all we'd need to do is click here go to a resend node. Fabulous. Let's click on add. And now before it does the return, it's also going to send an email letting us know that a new user was created. Great. So now we need to fill in our data and do a little bit of low code magic to make sure this all squares up. So the API key is going to come from our secrets. Now I already have a resend API key, but if you want to add your own, all you got to do is click on add secret. Go ahead and select that. The from field is going to be from team at buildship.com. The to and HTML we're actually going to remove. You'll see what I mean in just a moment. And the subject is going to be new user. Very exciting. <laughs> Let's go ahead and dive into the code of our resend API node. Let's go into our params before we look at our JavaScript. Great, so we're going to remove the to and HTML. And we're going to add a new field called user. Label is also going to be called user. And the type is going to be an object. I'm going to make that a required field. And now that we have access to that, we can dive into our node logic once again and do a little bit of coding to tweak this and make sure that we've got everything working. So remember, we've removed the to and HTML. I'm going to replace HTML with user. So we're actually going to manually write some HTML here to use an h1 that says new user. And we're going to essentially stringify our new user into that email. Great. So this is now our HTML is already set up. The to field we're going to replace with admin at buildship.com. And there we have it. Let's go ahead and save that. Now we actually need to attach this user from our data. So I'm going to go ahead and go into object validator and get our validated user object. With all that done, we can go ahead and ship. And there we have it. Now we've modified our Firestore workflow to also email the admins when a new user is added. How cool is that? With just a few clicks, we've integrated a whole new workflow. And as you can see, there's a whole bunch of other stuff we can do. You can actually use BuildShip to integrate all of the services you want, because if it's not in one of our templates, hey, why not add it using AI? You can actually click here and go on Generate with AI to generate your own nodes that integrate the services you need. But don't take it from me, folks. Sign up at buildship.com and try it out for yourself. We'd love to hear what you're building with Buildship. But for now, I'll see you at the next video.